So my name is uh, Patrick Hansen. I'm head of blockchain at Bitcom, and I had uh, the honor of already moderating a, a regulation panel yesterday at the first day, um, where we talked about the regulation of DeFi, but also uh, about the regulation of security token and tokenization in general. And uh, I'm really honored to, sp uh, to speak now about tokenization in Germany and Europe. And uh, more specifically, I will briefly um, talk about uh, the, the association. I work for Bitcom, then I will uh, shed a light on the market of tokenization in Germany and Europe. And, and lastly, I will talk about uh, why, in my opinion, regulation is really changing um, the tokenization market right now and is paving a way for future growth in this market. So let's directly jump into it. Um, so what is Bitcom? And uh, Bitcom is basically the association of digital businesses here in Germany. And in terms of member companies, it's the largest association of uh, digital companies in Europe. We have over 2000 member companies in total. And uh, also in the blockchain sector, I think uh, we can say that we are by far the largest and the most active cross-industry company network. You see that many of the companies that have been presenting at the conference here are part of Bitcom, if, if not most of them. And uh, together with uh, all those member companies, we drive um, those regulatory topics in Germany, of course, also in Europe through uh, consultations, position papers, meetings, etc. But apart from our political and lobbying work, we do a lot of uh, cross-industry publications as well um, through white papers, uh, for example, on DeFi, uh, the digital euro, self-sovereign identity and, and other topics. And, and as one example, we published last year the first and uh, I think also the only representative study research on the adoption of blockchain technology in Germany. I will present some of the results today. And of course, another big part of our association is the network building, the knowledge sharing between our members through uh, very frequent uh, meetings, events, uh, and working group meetings. So uh, if you're interested in, in driving all those developments, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, but let's now get to the topic of today's presentation, tokenization. And uh, before starting and giving you um, some stats and some figures about, about where we stand right now, about what the state of tokenization is in Germany and Europe. Quickly, a recap of the definition. Um, so I posted here the, the, the BaFin definition, so the definition of the German Financial Supervisory Authority. Um, but in short, uh, one can say that basically tokenization is the process of uh, representing digitally a certain right or asset on a distributed ledger technology or a blockchain. Um, of course, the Bafin, Bafin as authority is always reluctant uh, of using uh, the, the term blockchain or DLT since it has to stay technology neutral, but in essence, it, it says the same. And uh, I mean, the, the, the advantages of tokenization have been touched very often already here at the conference. I won't get too much into detail, but basically it's lower cost. Um, faster settlement and better settlement, a higher transferability, a, a bigger liquidity, and also obviously a greater transparency of the whole tokenization process. So basically, if we look at the market in Germany right now, let's start by really um, looking uh, at the bigger picture. Where do we stand in the blockchain space? And one can say, at least in Germany, so this is these are very these are really representative figures here. And uh, unfortunately, one must acknowledge and one must say that blockchain within the larger economy is not yet a bigger subject. Um, not necessarily because companies are skeptical or hostile towards blockchain, um, but, all, but, but, um, but um, mainly because you see that here on the, on the right side that just companies not know more about blockchain have never dealt with blockchain technology. And this is also a clear mandate for us as industry and, of course, um, for Bitcom as industry association to not only talk to regulators and political stakeholders, but really to drive the whole topic of blockchain and tokenization towards um, the larger society and, and, and the larger economy, especially SMEs. 
if we zoom in um, amongst those companies that are interested in blockchain technology and uh, and have already started some use cases, um, it it seems very clear where the greater potentials are seen. Um, so basically, the use case uh, with the highest um, ratings here is blockchain as a decentralized transaction system. Um, and then number two, three, and four are basically blockchain for the secure management of uh, keys and rights, a blockchain for more traceability along the value chain. And I think those ratings here are basically a very good proxy that uh, the German economy sees a great potential for blockchain, um, uh, for uh, the technology of blockchain for tokenization, for the process of tokenization. Of course, this study was... Uh, um, was done uh, in end of 2018. So if we look at the last aspect here, the funding is still highly influenced by the whole ICO bubble, bur bubble burst. I guess uh, we will repeat that study next year, uh, early next year, and I expect really different numbers there. Um, but if we zoom further in, and this is what is very interesting to me, if we look at how the financial industry responded to our survey. We see that they are, compared to the total economy, far ahead. Um, they are already more in action when it comes to blockchain generally. But uh, more interestingly, if we look at the middle, uh, at, at the lower middle um, graph or, or, or figure, we see that basically almost two thirds of financial companies. So all sizes included, also uh, SMEs, see a great potential or a rather great potential um, for the securitization of real goods and financial securities in blockchain. So this is basically the best proxy for the potential of tokenization that we have. And I think it, it, it shows how, how optimistic the financial industry here, also smaller players in Germany, are when it comes to the use of blockchain for tokenization. But maybe let's um, zoom out a little bit from Germany and look at uh, a broader uh, figures here. Um, we see that the number of FTOs, which will probably be the next uh, major wave of tokenization, is increasing quite substantially, especially within the financial services industry. And then if we look at where in Europe uh, those uh, STOs are conducted, um, we see that especially the DACH region or, or uh, more accurate re accurately Germany, Liechtenstein and Switzerland, so uh, Austria is not included, are really um, paving the way here and are really at the forefront of tokenization. And this is mainly due, I think we can say that, to regulation, which we will um, touch later on in this presentation. Um, this, this has also already been mentioned, but just a quick look at the market projection for tokenization globally. The only thing I would like to add here is um, you see that on the left hand side, those are two uh, figures from two young crypto custodians. And you see here that um, basically the market cap of security tokens, you see that here on the left hand side, is expected to outpace the market for cryptocurrencies very soon. So basically already next year or the year after that. And on the right hand side, you see again those projections from the World Economic Forum that uh, in, in 2027, basically 10% of the GDP will be tokenized. So also uh, globally very optimistic projections. And if we look at the German ecosystem, I think this is reflected by the number of companies and startups that have been founded in that area. Um, we have a really vibrant ecosystem uh, here in Germany. I borrowed this uh, figure from one of our members, Cashlink, and you can see that you have uh, really uh, many service providers along the tokenization value chain already uh, when it comes to custody, for example, as has been talked about uh, today, but also um, concerning the emission, the exchange, and also uh, advice related to uh, audits, uh, taxes, and, and everything else. Um, so basically, you see that the ecosystem is optimistic. The companies 
uh, look forward towards tokenization and there are also many service providers in place. So what has been missing these last years to really make this market fly? And this, I think, is quite a clear answer to that question. What was the main roadblocker? The main roadblocker was regulatory clarity by far. Um, of course, there is a lack of investor demand, which is uh, um, highly related to just the lack of, you know, uh, 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 of uh, supply or possible uh, assets that are already traded. But I think the by far the most important point is regulatory clarity, and this uh, aspect. So the aspect of regulation and uh, and uh, uh, political development is will drive the whole tokenization market uh, in the next one or two years. Um, some some arguments why I think uh, this this is uh, this seems so clear to me on a more abstract level. You see here, here the terminology used by regulators when it comes to uh, uh, crypto assets or blockchain. And then on a more abstract level, you see that terminology has really changed from talking about virtual currencies or, or mainly Bitcoin at the beginning towards now talking about digital assets, crypto assets, virtual assets. So what we have been seeing on those market projections that basically uh, tokenized securities will soon outpace cryptocurrencies is also acknowledged by regulators. Uh, and you can, this is quite uh, nicely represented here. And on a more specific level, I know this has also been already mentioned at this conference, but just a quick look at both Germany and the EU, what is happening in Germany. So on one side in Germany, you have a new draft law for electronic securities. So uh, really a new legal framework for issuing electronic securities in the future. And uh, also the introduction of uh, DLT-based crypto securities and a new BaFin license for, for, for the operation of such a, a crypto security register, uh, which will definitely uh, pave the way for more use cases in the future. Um, this proposal will be discussed uh, in the cabinet, so um, with all the German ministers on the 25th of November, and I expect this proposal to enter the parliament um, end of this year, and um, if all goes well, probably to be adopted in the spring next year. And on the, on the other side, you have those service providers, which are so important for the tokenization market also regulated now through, for example, the crypto custody license in Germany. And on the European side, it's quite similar. You have on the right side here, the markets and crypto assets regulation, which regulates basically all services. So the issuance, but also all the other financial services on top of crypto assets. So it's a very comprehensive regulation, which, which will definitely drive more institutional demand towards the crypto market and, uh, and that will push tokenization. Um, this uh, Mika proposal from the European Commission was discussed yesterday by the European member states and will probably take a little bit longer than the German um, uh, law. And um, if everything goes well, it might be adopted at the end of next year, but there is then uh, another phase of implementation, an implementation phase, a transitional phase before those rules apply. Um, probably in 2023 or end of 2022. And on the other side, and this is really a political milestone in the EU, you have the first pan-European sandboxing regime, which basically introduces some regulatory exemptions. We have never seen this kind of pilot regime at the EU level before. And basically, it enables um, a DLT-based um, multilateral trading facilities to offer uh, and uh, to trade securities without the central securities depository. And investors can be admitted to this uh, trading facility, DLT-based trading facility directly without intermediary. So this is also something that will definitely uh, push further use cases. I mean, together with our members, our association has um, published a statement on both the German and the EU legislation. We, we, we definitely see some criteria, for example, concerning this sandboxing regime that have to be 
changed in order to make it really attack, uh, attractive for larger and smaller companies, for example, the interoperability or the market volume thresholds. But in total, those two um, uh, uh, jurisdictions, the German and the EU level, are make me both make me both very optimistic uh, towards uh, a further tokenization mass market. So to sum up a little bit, very briefly, the key takeaways of my presentation today, we see that also through our representative figures that we're still in the early days of blockchain technology, but that um, the German companies see a lot of potential for asset tokenization, that the market in that space is growing quickly and reflected also by the number of STOs and service providers. Um, of course, the projections are very bullish in that field um, for asset tokenization, especially compared to um, the traditional cryptocurrency field. And lastly, which I was mentioning at the end, that in Germany and Europe, there is um, some very comprehensive regulation on the way that will further drive the growth, uh, growth in that market. And uh, I would like to conclude with that and invite all the companies and also individuals here that are interested in driving these developments further in the future. Those are both regulations that will stay relevant over the next month and years. And those who are interested, I can only invite everyone to, to join our association and, and to make sure that our voices and our interests as crypto industry are heard and considered along the way. Thank you very much.